Welcome to Saturn Surfers. Is everyone ready to get strapped in as we're about to shoot up into space? Hopefully it won't be too much of a bumpy ride. I'm Moon Margot, Head of Mission Control, and these are my two alien friends, Alien Adrian and Alien Alan. And today we're going to be exploring the wonders of the universe. On last week's episode, Marsh and Maddie and Titan Tom taught us all about the Big Bang, which created the universe and is the reason why we're all here today. This week we have some very special guests from all over the solar system, joining us on our adventure and taking you at home with them on their mission. Down here in Mission Control, we will be making sure everyone in space stays safe as they search for information whilst making new discoveries about our solar system. So how about we get started? Is everyone ready for takeoff? Oh wait, I think it's time to see what astronaut Amy's up to on her space adventure. Mission Control to Amy, do you read us? Hi everyone, I've just arrived on the new planet and I can't wait to go explore. Hello astronaut Amy. Tell us, what can you see right now in space? Well, it's absolutely boiling here. Must be so close to the sun. This planet is such a sandy, rocky texture. Feels like I'm on holiday at the beach. Also, it looks a lot like Venus and Mars. They're known as desert planets due to the mass amount of sand and ridiculous high temperatures. Also, Venus is, is known for being the hottest planet in the whole solar system, but I think this one might be a little bit hotter. I need some water to cool down. Let me check my backpack to see if I have any. So much better. Show us what else you have in your backpack. Well, I have some food for later. It's my special astronaut food. It doesn't look very appetizing to eat, but it goes through a process called freeze dry. This is when you remove the frozen water from the food by making it turn into a solid and then directly into a gas without it ever becoming a liquid. It's very yummy. Plus, ice cream sandwiches are my favorite. I'll save that for later. I should probably get my map out first. This is my map. It tells me where all the planets in the solar system are. We are right here. And we're looking for signs of extraterrestrial life. Also, every astronaut needs their flag. This is essential. This identifies new lands and who's found it. Finally, I have a picture of my family. This helps me when I get lonely in space and it's a reminder of all the loved ones I have back on Earth. And I wish I could have someone to join this venture with me. Let's go and look. Wait, who's that? I think it must be an alien. Let me turn on my alien transmitter so we can all understand. Hi, I'm astronaut Amy. What's your name? Hi, hello, my name is Aurora. Ah, Aurora, that's a beautiful name. I think you're the first alien I've ever met. What's an alien? Oh, silly me. I guess I'm the alien in it to this situation. You look a little bit scary. I've never met someone that looks like you before. Well, I'm an astronaut. I go through all through space showing my adventures to the boys and girls at home. And I'm also a human, a part of seven billion on the planet of Earth. Seven billion, that's so many people. There are only 100 people here on planet Athos. Hear that everyone? We're on a planet Athos, home for our new friend Aurora. Uh, who are you speaking to? Uh, I'm reporting back to Mission Control and, sh and they're showing all the boys and girls at home my adventure. Wow, that sounds super fun. I wish I could go and explore exciting space, but I've never left planet Athos before. Oh, I have an idea. Why don't you join me? I don't know. I do really like it here. The food is amazing. Here, try this. It's a delicacy here on Athos. Mm, it looks lovely. Thank you. But first, why don't you try some of ours? Okay. This is an ice cream sandwich. I don't know if I'll like it, but I'll, I'll give it a try. Mmm. Wow. That tastes amazing. Does all your food taste like this on your planet? Yeah. Wow. I want to travel around all the planets and try all the flavors. Then let's go. Our first stop is Jupiter. Ooh. Now, from one sandy planet to another, let's join Zodiac Zara and Meteor Map back on Earth. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, I'm Zodiac Zara. And I'm Meteor Matt. We're here at the beautiful Bournemouth Beach today to answer some little questions you may be curious about. Like Matt, why is the sky pitch black at night? Well Zara, that's a pretty hard one. Do you know why the moon changes shape every night? Or what exactly a star is? These are some awesome questions Matt, I can't wait to find out the answers. Well then, let's get started to help you guys understand why the world is just a little bit better. 
Now, I'll let you guys into a little secret. The sun is actually not a planet, but a star and the main source of light on Earth. Okay. During the day, the light rays from the sun enter the layer of air around Earth and the blue colour in the sky scatters quickly across the skyline and this makes the daylight in the sky blue. Oh, very, very interesting. Well, when the day is over, the sun completely disappears from our sight, just like it is now, meaning the sunset is over and nighttime can begin. At the night, the sky turns black because the Earth rotates on its axis, meaning it moves further away from the sun and therefore causes the sky to go a little bit darker. But if the sun is also a star, why can't other stars cause daylight and make the night sky blue? Well, unlike the sun, the other stars in the sky are incredibly far away from the world, so their light does not reach the Earth as easily and as brightly as the sun does. This is why other stars appear to us as small little dots of light. Oh, interesting. So they're nowhere near as big, are they? No. OK. Well, in reality, stars are actually luminous balls of gas. So just picture a ball of gas like this and produce heat and light. And some can be up to 100 times bigger than our sun. Well, others can actually be one tenth of the size. However, their sizes do not matter as the sun is the closest star to Earth, which obviously creates the light that we have. There is only one sun in our solar system, but approximately 200 billion trillion stars in the entire universe. Wow. Now at night, when you look up at the sky, you do not only see stars, but you actually see a bright glowing moon. I mean, I see that every now and then. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> but have you actually ever noticed that the moon changes shape and isn't always a full moon? And this is called the phases of the moon. And there are actually eight different ones. The four most familiar phases you would actually see is every month in order are a new moon, a first quarter, a full moon and a last quarter. A new moon is when the backside of the moon is being lit up but by the side facing the earth is in the darkness. This is hard to see and will blend in with the night sky. The first quarter moon is where the moon is illuminated 90 degrees away from the sun in the sky. The full moon is when the moon appears as a complete circle in the sky because the whole of the side of the moon facing Earth is lit up by the sun. And the last one, the quarter moon, occurs a week after the full moon and will also be half illuminated. The moon isn't just the brightest object in the dark night sky, but it also makes the Earth a more livable planet. Oh, On a beach like this, is the moon is very important as the high sea tides and low sea tides are caused by the moon. Uh -huh. The moon affects the tides because of gravity. You will have noticed that every time you jump, you always land back on the ground. This is because the Earth's gravity is pulling you back down and the moon has gravity of its own, which pulls the oceans and us towards it. Well, we hope you guys had really good fun learning about the moon, the stars, the sky and even the sun. Now we're off for a little paddle and maybe even a bit of a surf. And let's hope the tides aren't too low. This has been Zara and Matt teaching all you Saturn surfers out there the wonders of our universe. <coughs> Bye. Bye. Welcome back to Mission Control. Let's all say a big thank you to Zodiac, Zara and Meteor Matt for teaching us about space. I know I definitely learned something new. Who would have thought the moon can make the oceans move like that? Either way, all this talk of beaches is making me want to go on holiday. Hmm. Maybe we should book it all a place ticket for Mars. But for now, here at Mission Control, we're way too busy to be thinking of vacations. So far, everyone has stayed safe thanks to your help. Oh wait, I'm getting reports that Titan Tom and Martian Maddie have reached their destination. I wonder what we're going to learn about next. Shall we find out? Mission Control to Titan Tom and Martian Maddie, come in. <coughs> Hello Mission Control, we can read you. Titan Tom calling in. Martian Maddie calling in too. Oh, it looks like our mission just came through. Let me guess, something space related? Guessing from where we are right now? That's right. Today we're going to be updating Mission Control at home about all of the planets in our solar system. Now, remind me, how many planets is that again, Tom? Well, there's still just a total of eight planets in our solar system, including the planet that we used to live on, Earth. Uh, of course, eight planets, and we'll be telling you fun facts about each one. Are you ready, Tom? Yes, I am, and I hope that all of you at home are ready too. So first of all, there's the planet Mercury. Now, Mercury is the planet closest to our sun, and the smallest one in our solar system. Unlike the other eight planets, Mercury has zero moons, and is covered in many, many craters. The largest crater of Mercury could actually fit the whole of Europe. That is a huge crater. I know. <laughs> so the second planet from our sun is Venus. Now, Venus is not only the brightest planet, but it's also the hottest one. It's too hot for anyone to live That's on. That's right. <laughs> and it's covered in a thick layer of yellow clouds, 
forming a poison called sulfuric acid. Ugh. Ugh. No. Well, onto a planet that we're all very, very familiar with. It's Earth, Tom. Of course, Earth, yep. <laughs> now, Earth is the third planet from our sun and the fifth largest. It is a small rocky planet with over 7 billion people living on it. That includes you, well, used to, yep. and you. And you too. <laughs> Mars is the fourth planet from the sun. Now, it's kind of a red and rocky and cold planet, uh, but it does have the highest mountain in our entire really? solar system. And it has a volcano named Olympus Mons, which is a pretty sick name. Very cool name. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and the biggest in our solar system. In fact, it could fit over 1,000 Earths just inside of it. A thousand Earths? A thousand! <laughs> That's so big. It has a big red spot on it, which is actually a massive storm that has been raging for hundreds upon hundreds of years. Wow, that is a long storm. Yeah. <laughs> now, the sixth planet from the, so from the sun is Saturn, which is also known as the planet of rings. Now, these, these rings are actually made up of uh, thin ice chunks and dust, and the planet itself is mm. a gas giant, and Saturn, actually has 18 moons. 18? Which is way more than any other planet. <laughs> True. Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun. It is blue in colour and known as the icy planet because it's the coldest Ooh. one. Uranus is made up of mainly rock and ice and the only planet that spins on its side. Yeah. And finally, our last planet for today is Neptune. Now, Neptune is the furthest planet from the sun and it's another gas giant made up of ice and rock. It's blue in colour and it's named after the Roman god of the sea, which is uh, very fitting, don't you think? I mean, the sea is blue, The Tom. sea is blue. <laughs> now that we've gone through all eight planets, it's time to decide our favourite one. But first, a short moment of silence for Pluto, which used to be a planet, but it got disqualified because it was too small. <laughs> Just a reminder, don't let anyone bring you down, no matter what your size. That's a good message, yep. Very positive. So, Tom, what's your favourite planet? Well, my favourite planet is definitely Uranus, because of its name, of course. It comes from the Greek god of the sky. How cool is that? Very cool. So, what about you, Maddie? Which is your favourite one? Um, I'd have to say Jupiter, because I'm just a little bit obsessed with it. I just love how yeah. the red is just a raging storm. Like, very cool. Yeah, so now it's time for you at home to tell us what your favourite planet is and help out with mission control. My favourite planet is Saturn because I like the rings that surround it. I like Jupiter because it's a gas giant. My favourite is Neptune because it's got over 30 moons. That's amazing! We hope you enjoyed learning the great facts about all eight planets in our solar system. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. I've been Titan Tom. And I've been Marsh and Maddie. Oh wait, our anti-gravity shoes have stopped working. Oh no, we don't have long. Kids, we need your help making rocket to get us back home safely. Quick, Please. quick, quick, quick. 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 Ah. Hey kids, I'm planetary Phoebe, second in command to Moon Margot. And you heard Marsh and Maddie and Titan Tom. Let's get them out of there by building them a rocket. We have four minutes to save them. Let's go. So for this mission, we will need toilet roll tubes, colourful tissue paper, glue, kitchen foil and scissors but remember don't use them without an adult because they can be dangerous and quite sharp and we don't want you guys getting hurt because we need you for this mission. We need everyone's help to save Marsh and Maddie and Titan Tom. Are you ready? Great so everyone grab your toilet roll and we want to cover it in glue make it nice and sticky and then once you've done that we're going to roll it into our tin foil like so and did you know that rockets have been used in space travel for over 70 years right so the next thing you want to do is cut out the tissue paper into circles so that we can stick it on our rocket i'm going to use orange so take your scissors and cut out a couple circles did you know how many rockets nasa has launched into space well a total of 166 and you know how expensive that is 
Rockets cost $500 million to build and launch. And with that money, you could buy 943 million chicken nuggets from McDonald's. Brilliant. Okie doke, so we've got our circles here. I'm gonna stick these onto my rocket. Like so. And then you wanna get another color of paper or tissue paper um, and cut it into some triangles so that we can make the rocket fins and so we can shoot into space and save them. I have two here that I'm going to stick on. So you wanna fold the corners and glue it or tape it onto the rocket, like so. We're nearly there guys, don't give up. So we've got one next step. And you wanna grab some beautiful colored tissue paper and fold it so you can get this nice stringy look. And then repeat that six times um, and glue it onto your rocket. So I've got some in stock, which I've already done, so I can start sticking. And place it in here like this and there you are your very own rockets hang on a second well we can't send him off without naming it what should we call it how about starship so it's ready for blast off let's get back to moon margo at mission control for our final goodbyes well, thanks to all of you at home, we were able to build a rocket just in time to help get Titan Tom and Marsh and Maddie safely home. I don't know about all of you, but I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. I didn't think we could make it. But you guys managed to build a rocket in under four minutes. How amazing. Sadly, it looks like that's all we've got time for in this episode of Saturn Surfers. But don't forget to come back at the same time next week where we'll have even more adventures and missions to go on. From all of us here at Mission Control, thank you for watching. Goodbye.